let's talk about this cool new space telescope. Upcoming Hubble telescope rival will be lifted by a balloon the size of a football stadium. The future of space telescopes promises to be very interesting with the likes of the James Webb Space Telescope looming over the horizon. Space telescopes benefit greatly from the fact that they aren't bothered by atmospheric interference. Nonetheless, they aren't the only type of telescope that can achieve this benefit. There are other interesting concepts that can deliver similar results. Scientists from Princeton, Durham, and Toronto universities pulled together with specialists from the C uh, CSA and NASA to develop a novel type of astronomical telescope. This resulted in the uh, Soiper Pressure Balloon Borne Imaging Telescope, or SuperBit. And uh, it will float on top of our atmosphere, providing the first row seat for peeking at the stars. SuperBit is planned to be deployed in April 2022 and will operate at an altitude of at approximately 40 kilometers above 99.5. 5% of our atmosphere, freeing it from most atmospheric interference akin to uh, the familiar space telescopes. Due to its weight, the new astronomical telescope will be carried to the above-mentioned altitude with an enormous balloon with the volume of 532... I don't know if that's 1,000? No, that's a dot, so it would be 532 cubic meters approximately the size of a football stadium. I don't know if you know the size of a football stadium, but it's massive. The telescope will be equipped with a mirror that has a diameter of a half a meter. Its primary goal will be to improve our understanding of the distribution of dark matter across galaxy clusters and in the universe's large scale structure. Now, I don't know how much you know about um, these huge telescopes that are going into space, Hubble or the James Webb telescope, um, but a half a meter is actually rather small. Like some of these are like 12 meters across. Uh, really, I mean, they're multiple mirrors put together in, in a, a perfect alignment. Now this would just be one mirror that is half a meter. That's, that's nothing. That's like, I mean, I can show you guys like what a half a meter is, right? It's, it's really not that much. The project is unique as nobody has attempted this before, not only because it's remarkably complicated and challenging to do, but also because balloons could stay aloft for only a few nights, which is considered too short for an ambitious experience such, experiment such as this. Nevertheless, NASA has a solution as it recently developed uh, so-called superpressure balloons that should be able to encompass helium for a much longer period of time. If all goes well, they should be able to stay aloft for multiple months. During such a duration of time, the telescope will be able to circumnavigate the Earth multiple times, carried by seasonable, seasonal stable winds. The idea is that the telescope will be observing the skies at night while it will be able to recharge during the day using solar panels. So why are scientists going through so much effort to study the night sky for a few months when space telescope, uh, telescopes can be operational for several years? We haven't talked about SuperBit's most significant benefit yet, which is the fact that it's almost a thousand times less expensive than a ta uh, space telescope with similar capabilities. Although the Hubble Space Telescope has proven to be an incredible feat of engineering, surpassing the expectations of many in the long run, it will inevitably inevitably fail, which we actually um, I reported on. It did fail recently. A computer went down and it wasn't able to function for a while. They did actually just uh, were able to reboot it and figure it out, and it's it's now officially running again, which is crazy to think that it's still running after all these years. Um, Furthermore, it has been shared that the telescope will probably not be repaired again when it does, which it was repaired, but not physically. It, hadn't, it actually hasn't been serviced um, since 2009, I believe, was the last time the Hubble telescope was actually serviced um, by human hands. Successors to the Hubble telescope, like the James Webb telescope, space telescope, will focus on infrared wavelengths or a single optical band akin to the planned uh, Euclid Observatory. This would mean that projects like Superbit 
will be the only facility in the world capable of high-resolution multicolor optical and ultraviolet observations. Funding, this, uh, funding has already been received to create a mirror upgrade for the Superbit, going from a, a diameter of half a meter to a diameter of uh, one and a half meters would mean a 10 times boost of its light gathering capabilities. Coupling the above mentioned mirror upgrade with a wider lens angle and more megapixels will make this proposed larger Superbit even more capable than Hubble. Moreover, this low cost even makes it conceivable to produce a fleet of these telescopes, offering time to astronomers around the world. Now, what I think is really in incredible about this kind of an idea is, so take the Hubble telescope, for example. It's out in space, right? We haven't touched it since 2009, 11 years ago, right? And it's we somehow were able to get it working again through rerouting power and using a secondary backup unit or something along those lines but if these if these are actually more powerful um than the hubble and they come back down it's not like they're going to crash we can collect them um, upgrade them send it up again it's going to constantly be using newest the newest technology so if it went from half a meter to now uh one and a half meters and then you know, maybe next year we can send up a five meter mirror and float above the atmosphere and gather images that we are, we're not even, we can't even fathom right now because Hubble, I mean, the, the pictures that Hubble has sent to us are incredible and they're 30 years old. So we're, we're looking at 30 year old technology, giving these incredible images to us. That's why I can't wait for the James Webb telescope to come because I mean, I want to see what this thing's capable of, of having, you know, th something significantly stronger than the Hubble telescope. It's, you know, what's it going to produce over the next 30 years? Because that's what the Hubble has given us, let alone something like this super bit idea, because we can constantly be getting uh, fresh um, upgraded images with the best technology because we just float it up and then it comes back down, upgrade it, float it up and... You know, it'll probably stay longer as that technology uh, progresses along. So I'm kind of excited. It's going to be really good.